Let's bring in our next guest here on the program, Financial Phil, Phil McCoy from Ameriprise Financial and the Marius Group of Financial Advisors. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm living the dream, guys. How are you all? You know, Phil, if anybody's in risk of being primaried, I think it's you. Primaried <laughs> out of his role on the show on Mondays at 835 after a Steelers loss, uh, by the way. Phil, how are you feeling this morning, baby? Well, I, I, I get over it pretty quickly, but, man, that was a, that was disappointing in – Kind of confirmation of what we saw the first three weeks. They were two and one, and I was I was happy that they were two and one. But if you look at one of those wins, that was I mean, defense came up with two touchdowns. That was a game they probably shouldn't have won, and they barely squeaked by the Raiders. So I can't say that I'm shocked that the uh, offense looked as bad as it did. I was a little bit surprised that the defense looked as bad as they did. Man, it was a, that was a porous defense. And I know C.J. Stroud has been a good-looking rookie, but he's a rookie. And what was kind of like heartbreaking to see is the the formations that Houston used to keep Watt and Highsmith out of the backfield. Well, why why can't we do something to that effect to keep some of these rush edges out of our backfield? You know, we don't do anything. We just leave our tackles on an island, knowing that there's very few edge rushers that they can block. We just leave them out there, and uh, and and they just put pressure on us the entire day. But nothing nothing went right for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But having said that, you know, by the time 5 o'clock hits, I do realize that they don't pay my bills and the world will go on tomorrow. And I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. I was a little bit surprised over the defense. So I get over it pretty quickly. We'll just look forward to the Ravens. You know, maybe they turn everything around. They beat the Ravens. or 3-2 and two going into a bye week. Uh, start to get Johnson and Hayward back. Maybe they'll fire Matt Canada. I doubt it, but maybe they'll fire Matt Canada, and that that could turn the season around. Well, they really do need to fire Matt Canada. They needed to do that yes, last year. And God bless. I feel yeah. kind of bad for the guy. I really do. He. I don't think he purposely is terrible. He's just terrible. <laughs> he's just terrible. Yeah, I don't think he's doing it on purpose. But man, that that he's he's got to be in danger right now. I hope he doesn't have kids in school in the <laughs> Pittsburgh area because if he does, it, it's going to be ugly. It's not his fault. He's terrible. You know, they offered him a job he took, and he's terrible. They should fire him. It's not his fault that he's been there. For uh, I wouldn't leave if I were him either. But man, he's awful. He's awful. He's God bless him. Just not good. And no, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is, who the receivers are, who the linemen are. He's just orchestrating an offense that goes nowhere, and it's predictable. Uh, and, well, and as an old, it's never going to get better. The one that turned my stomach the most is you're starting to run the ball a little bit. Najee Harris is getting some some uh, downhill momentum, and I think he had close to 100 yards, believe it or not. But here you go, fourth and one, where they could have kicked a field goal. I don't know why they didn't kick a field goal. But that, the game turned on that. It was 16-6. to six. It had some momentum. Kick a field goal. 16-9, to nine, you're only down one touchdown. Defense had started playing well. And you go and shotgun on fourth and one and try to throw the ball? Are you, are you serious? And then Pickett gets, runs out of the pocket for seemingly no reason. I can't blame him because he's always getting pressured. And now he's got a bum knee. So it's just, all of that lands on. Matt Canada, get your quarterback up under center and hand it to your 250-pound running back. Sneak it, for God's sake. Do something. But to go and shotgun on fourth and one, that's uh, that's insulting to to an old offensive lineman. I thought Canada annoyed me a lot during the Olympics that they hosted because they played that anthem like every, every other minute, it seemed, because they kept winning gold medals. But now Matt Canada annoys me more than the nation of Canada. I've had enough of Canada. <laughs> I don't want the country. I don't want the I, coordinator. I, feel, I do feel bad for him, though. I do. I don't know if it's my old age or what, but I'm thinking, like, it's not really his fault. Like, if you made me Pittsburgh's defensive coordinator or offensive coordinator, I'd be terrible. I'd be awful at it. And after a couple of weeks, the whole city of Pittsburgh would hate me. And it's not really my <laughs> fault. It's just I'm not any good at that. And, yeah. and, and he's not any uh-huh. good, clearly. And them leaving him there for years, maybe putting his life in danger in Pittsburgh, man. I'm telling you, they don't like him there. Well, it's going to put his lawn in danger, that's for sure. Hey, let's it's talk put something. Let's talk money, right? We had a horrible August, a horrible September. Is October going to be any better? Right now the futures uh, numbers are negative. They're slightly negative, but they're still negative. I certainly hope so. And it's, but it's going to be the same narrative, the same old tired narrative. That, you know, we, we've got a few other things to talk about, like UAW strikes and the, gov- and the government shut down, kicking the can down the road and so forth. But still, the, the main thing, and I think we saw a glimpse of that on Friday, the main thing is going to be the data that comes out that, that leads us to, or leads the Federal Reserve in their decision and our 
uh, perception of what the Federal Reserve may or may not do. The biggest one I think right now is employment numbers. I think that's probably the most important number that we get in, in, in looking for some weakness, not enough weakness to make us afraid of a recession, but some weakness on the employment front because that is an inflationary pressure. It's a good thing in a, in a vacuum for a family. You know, Of course, you want people to make more money, but overall in a battle with inflation – and ultimately, the Federal Reserve uh, pausing and uh, eventually cutting rate. You need to see some weakness in, on the employment front. And, the, and again, you know, those same uh, CPI, PPI, PCE, all those things, I get tired of them too. But that, that is the focus on our markets right now and how long, you know, now the narrative is higher for longer. And it's because the economy supports it as they measure it anyway. The economy supports that. And, 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 of course, there will be the, those things that kind of interrupt that and take the narrative away from inflation and the Federal Reserve and, and the rates and the yield, the bond yields and, and all that stuff that I'm so tired of talking. I, am, I really am because it's been so long now. You know, all of 20 – we started at the end of 2021, all of 2022, all of 2023, and it will run into all of 2024. Now, at some point – could be a good thing you know we may start to get get data that says hey they can start to cut rates or consider cutting rates and jerome powell speaks today but i don't know what he's going to say that he didn't insinuate or allude to in, in the past there's nothing really that has changed other than friday i think friday was a decent day i don't know that i checked it at the end of the day but i think friday was a decent day and it was because of the pce numbers that we assumed uh based off of all the other uh, numbers that we had gotten we assumed that they were they were going to be once set, and they come in a little bit better than expected. So our markets rallied because of it. In the face at that time, in the face of a government shutdown still on the horizon, and we saw our markets kind of trickle up a little bit, all because of that. So it shows us the importance of the, this economic data that comes through on a weekly and monthly basis. And it will be the narrative, but let's look back at last year where – Really, you kind of had the same background. Uh, honestly, you know, they were still in the rate hiking uh, process, but we started to see signs in October that they could begin to slow, and they did uh, begin to slow, which they did in December. And so if you look at a rolling one year from October 1st to October 2nd now, if you look at that rolling one year, it has been a good period for the market, even with this bad quarter. We had a bad March, too. I, I, we tend to forget that March. We had a bad March this year as well. But And that's indicative. You're going to have negative quarters uh, in the up markets. We just need something to turn us around from what September was. August was negative, too. It saved it some at the end of the month. But September was pretty rough, just like in 2022. And then we turned around in, in October. Hopefully we can see that same thing. Phil, Jeff Haddock says, I'm, a, I'm throwing this sentence in myself, that you need to take your own advice here. And when it comes to football, you need a more balanced football portfolio. You, you got to spread your rooting interest among several I teams. Can't. That way, I can't. it's not hit or miss. I can't. I bleed black and gold, man. So I've got to go. I've got to go with the black and gold, no matter what. I, and, I'm with you, buddy. I, I think that's the way it is with football and I'll, teams. I'll convince myself back into fandom, probably by the end of the day. I'll convince myself. Hey, they're going to beat the Ravens. And then they're going to be three and two. Nineteen sixteen is going to be that score, by the way. And they're going to be three and two going into the bye week. And, and when you look at the first five games, they're still in the mix. But ultimately, I, deep down, I know that offense is really bad. It's really, really bad. And I'm just hopeful that Matt Canada is the only problem, and someone like Byron Leftwich can come in and fix it. But it doesn't matter. They're not going to get rid of him. He's going to be there. Heck, he might be there next year for all I know. <laughs> His contract's up this year. There's no way he gets extended. <laughs> no way. Billy, go ahead, man. Uh, good morning, uh, Phil. I'm beginning to think that the market is hardened to outside uh, pressures. Uh, the UAW strike is expanding. It's getting in supply chain. And a, a couple of that with the health care workers is going to be affecting several states stimuli that would normally affect a market uh, but yet we've seen in the past the market seems to be not totally oblivious but not really caring too much about it uh, is a are we seeing more money go from equities to the cash funds such as the uh, IRAs or or the uh, money marks and the like uh, you you are and there's a few reasons for that one you've, you've got this fear right you've got 
this overwhelming fear of what the Federal Reserve is going to do and this, these recession fears, uh, you have political fears. Whether and That's always the case. I don't want to make it sound as if we don't have political fears, but half of the country is always scared to death about who's in office and what they're going to do. But at the moment, what is is good on one hand and in, in, in a vacuum, I keep saying in a vacuum is good, the risk-free rate of return right now is higher than what we've seen in over a decade. You, know, you could get a three- or six-month uh, certificate, and that's a risk-free rate of return, meaning it's simply that if I put money in, I don't have to worry about it going down. You can get a pretty decent return off that, around 4.5%, 5.5%, depending on how long you're willing to tie that money up. So it, it does become attractive in, the, in these up-and-down environments to say, hey, I'm just going to throw this over here into a cash product. And you can have those cash products in any type of pocket or any type of conduit, whether it's an IRA, traditional IRA, which is tax deferred, or you can have a Roth IRA, or it could just simply be a non-qualified account at a bank. It doesn't really matter you know, how, it, how it gets in there. You can hold those types of products in cash products in all of those types of accounts. So it, it does lead some people to say, hey, why don't I just move some of this money out of equities and in the cash, and, and on one hand, I do understand that mindset, but on the other hand, when you're thinking long-term, and, and we are long-term thinkers, that's what, that's what we do here. We're not, you know, we don't do a lot of day trading. We're long-term thinkers, but when you do that sort of thing, you know, even with the, the market struggles of September and August, the only way this year that you would have kept up in, with inflation from a, from an investment standpoint, I'm not talking about going out buying real estate and such, but from an investment standpoint, the only thing so far this year that has beat inflation, that has outpaced inflation, even with the bad August and September, is equities. And so many people during these periods are moving their money out of equities into uh CDs or savings accounts or something that they don't have to worry about the ups and downs. And again, I understand that. But the only thing that beat inflation, so if you started January 1st and said, okay, what can I put my money in? And it's going to be more than what it was It was reduced due to inflation. That would be equities. And that's the mistake a lot of people make. So from a long-term basis, bad idea. From a short term, if you have an expense coming up, you know, I've got daughters that you know, one's in college, and I know I've got tuition coming up in the in the in the winter, and you know we have some home improvement stuff we have to do. Those types, of, those cash products are absolutely perfect for that because it shouldn't be in the market anyway. If you're getting ready to spend it in, in a short period of time, but so many people, even with a long-term focus, are moving their money, and that's market timing. And, and we, we warn of that, and every all of our education tells us to warn. Uh, warns us of market timing on a long term basis when you're when you're invested for the long term that you don't try to predict or, or guess what's going to happen you invest based off what your goals and time frame would be and, and you don't change that regardless of what the current environment is but it, it, it that is the phenomenon of equities going to cash a lot of times you see it going to bonds right now you do see a lot of equities going to cash products because of that risk free rate of return Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning, sir. <clears throat> I just want to say that uh, having grown up as a Washington Redskin fan, um, it takes character to root for a losing team. So you <laughs> you stick to the, your guns. You know, it's it's easy to switch, but you you hang in there. Uh, and that's all I'll talk about on football because that's the Thanks for your support. Um, over the weekend, the Wall Street Journal uh, published an article called "Americans Still Spending Like There's No Tomorrow," and it's almost a, a an apocalyptic kind of article where. Uh, people are not saving anymore. Across the board, savings are plummeting. People are not buying houses because of the uh, interest rates. And travel is through the roof. You know, experiential um, spending is, is through the roof. And I just, I look at this and I think we got a generation of folks who have just had it and, um, and will spend like there's no tomorrow if, in fact, it is as systemic as the, the journal seems to think it is, how scary is this for the economy? Well, it, it's, it's scary in the, in the near term because that is the problem that the Federal Reserve faces right now with inflation. That is that, that, can, that strong consumer. Now, normally, what you had just said, normally that would be really good news for the markets. That would be great news. Like, hey, people don't care. 
Let them run up their credit cards. Let them not say we want them spending that money with these uh, companies so that these companies can make money, and therefore the stock market goes up and we all uh, who participate in the stock market will do well. The problem right now is, though, is this supply and demand narrative, and that demand has remained strong. Part of the support for that demand, even though it's not necessarily have had there was a period where it did outpace inflation, not not now, I don't think, but the wage inflation has supported that, and that's why we say this focus on the jobs number. We need to see some weakness in our employment market so that some of that demand will no longer be supported and it hopefully will slow the consumer down. But that's what they're trying to do is slow the consumer down. And that, and that whole uh, statement that you had just mentioned about we're spending like there's no tomorrow, we seem to not care about what interest rates are and the cost of borrowed money and so forth. Eventually companies are going to care because that's how they, that's how they spread, that's how they uh, – multiply their businesses in a lot of ways is borrowing money for themselves and issuing bonds. But if the debt service on that is so high because of what the current rates are, companies will slow down. And then it's just a vicious cycle. That's why it's so important Federal Reserve get down to a particular target. It's a vicious cycle. You know, hey, we got uh, demand is strong, so let's make supply strong. Well, it's hard to make supply strong when, when the borrowing cost for companies is so high we can't really meet that demand, and it's just a vicious cycle. So that's that's why it's so, so important, and the Federal Reserve is paying attention to the uh, consumer price index and producer price index and the personal consumption and all those things. That's why they're paying such close attention to them and the jobs numbers. We, we really do need to see some weakness on the jobs front in the employment market in order as a precursor to, hey, maybe inflation can, can, can get all the way down to that target instead of hovering around where it's at right now. But aren't we really exposed if, um, if if we do get the rollback of the jobs numbers and we have so many people who are not saving and do not have equity in homes and all of this, doesn't this tee up a kind of a, a widespread personal disaster for folks? It can, and, that, and that's where the hope for the markets comes in and that the, the, the statement higher for longer while we want to see that change a little bit. Because if that were to happen and the Federal Reserve still has this in their arsenal to cut rates, and if they cut rates and then encourage some spending, encourage money back into equities, back a minute ago to what we said about money leaving equities, when those cash rates aren't so attractive, well, where are they going to go? They're going to go back into into the equity market, which would support a strong stock market performance for our 401ks. You know, and I always make sure to, to mention this. We think of stock market performance, and it only helps the, the rich guys and, and, and so forth. But, you know, the, the blue-collar workers also have 401Ks, and the blue-collar workers also need the, for those 401Ks to do well to support them in retirement. But that is the, the, uh, the, the bullet that they have in order to cut rates of, in a way. You know, and this is a long-term kind of thought. In a way, the higher the Federal Reserve goes with rates, even if there is another increase, that's more that they can drop in the future. So, of course, if they increase rates again, it's going to have, or if we think they're going to increase rates again, it's going to have a negative impact on the market. But at some point when they unwind that, that will have just as much positive impact on the market. So there goes the long term. It looks like it was a moot point. And now short term, yeah, it's a little scary when they if they were to increase rates again. And then in the short term, it's, wow, look how good our markets are doing because they're cutting rates. But they'll have the capacity to do so because they're so high. Phil, got a couple comments online I'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, from Jeff Haddix, a CD ladder is a good way to go if you have some extra cash that you don't want to invest in the market. And then from Rick Manning, if I was 25, I'd still be 100% involved in equities, but at 71, I've converted about 40% of my portfolio to decent fixed rate CDs. Any thoughts on those two quotes? Uh, uh, I, I agree with Rick completely. Uh, his age isn't the only thing that would dictate how much equity exposure he should have. But at the age of 71, the assumption is that he may need or is using some of the monies off of his portfolio. Uh, so that the fact that he's got 60 percent of equities tells me that he's aware that he needs his money to grow because Rick's going to live a long time. And that money is going to need to last for a long time. And the only way to keep pace and beat inflation is on the equity side. And, and for Jeff, yes, 
a, a, a ladder of if, if you're not going to put it into the market, so if this is short-term use, but look at those rates because the you know, traditional ladders, the further you go out, the higher the rate's going to be. That starts to change around one year, I think, right now. So start to look at if you're going to ladder, you know, do them all in, in, the, same, in the same increments, 3, 6, 9, 12. So every three months you've got something expiring. And with that new with that new purchase, so when that three months expires or whatever it may be that you decide to do, purchase the longer dated uh, CD or savings certificate with that, so that they always look the same. But make sure that you don't tie yourself up too much with liquidity, if that's money that you need in in the in the near term. And know that eventually, when those CDs or certificates renew, that they may be renewing at a lower rate. And that would be a good that would be a good thing because uh, that would mean that the Federal Reserve is cutting rates to spur our economy on, and the markets are doing pretty well. But ladders are a good strategy for money that's not set away for 30, 40 year use down the line. Bill, how do we reach you for more information today? You can reach us at three zero four two six three four three four three, or stop by and see us with an appointment at twelve seventy Winchester Avenue, right here, in Martinsburg. Thank you, Phil. Have a great day. Thank you, guys.